welcome everybody to uh, Sustainable Forestry Initiative and Green Building. Um, this course is approved for uh, multiple certifications, including LEED AP Homes, as well as AIA uh, Health, Welfare, and Safety. And it's brought to you by the Green Home Institute. I am the executive director here at the nonprofit, the Green Home Institute. And before we get started, a big thanks to our top tier sponsor, um, Ream, uh, introducing the all new Ream Prestige, an energy efficient, quiet, all electric hybrid heat pump water heater. The future of water heating is here. Uh, 50, 65, or 80 gallons, the Ream Prestige can serve many of your clients' different needs, all the way up to 370% um, energy efficiency with a 3.7 uniform energy factor. Ream stands behind their product with a 10 year warranty quieter than your typical loud heat pumps and does have tax incentives and rebates. One thing we're really excited about is the two different ways this unit can be installed depending on um, your project, what kind of site it's going in, what kind of climate you're in and what your goals are. These can be ducted uh, systems or they can be standalone systems that pull directly um, from the space. Check with your local HVAC contractor and home energy assessor to determine the needs of your client on where those need to go. The Rain Procedure also helps your clients stay smart with service notifications and potential leak detections, but still make sure you use that drip pan when you're installing it in or above living space. The other great thing is utilities are using these um, products around the country as a pilot program to actually use them as a battery system so that they uh, only heat water at nighttime when the grid has low demand and then expend energy during the day. So depending on where you're located or if you want to reach out to your utility, they might have a cool uh, program to set up to use the system as a, as a battery. Also, thanks to our second tier sponsor, Water Furnace. Water Furnace uses the natural heating and cooling of the earth through ground source heat pump technology, which currently creates uh, more energy efficient heating and cooling of the most efficient on the planet, as well as hot water. All sorts of systems are available and all sorts of drilling options are available depending on your client's sites and needs and budgets. Uh, you can check more out in information on, on them and what they're doing at geothermalforall. Dot com. All right, well, welcome to our uh, session speaker here, Annie Perkins. She is the Senior Director, Green Building and Supply Chain um, at Sustainable Forestry Initiative, SFI, where the mission is to advance sustainability through forest-focused collaborations. Annie has spent the past 15 years working to advance sustainability and provide supply chain assurance. Her experience in product transparency certifications and the circular economy coupled with her passion to improve communities locally and globally, supports that mission. Um, so with that, Annie, I am going to hand it off to you and then please take it away. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, I can now, yep. All right, and can you see my screen? There it is. Is the panel in the way? Nope, it's hiding. Oh, you, it's nobody hiding. else sees it. But you. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, great. Uh, very good. Well, thanks everyone for attending, and um, I'm very happy to be here to share a little bit about SFI and particularly how it can help with green building projects um, and lead as well. And we'll be doing questions afterwards. So hopefully, if you have them, you can put them in the chat box for Brett, and or just uh, we can chat about them when we're all said and done. And as you know, you're probably here for some continuing unit, uh, continuing education units, and so that's all good as well. The learning objectives today, we're going to we're going to examine the connections between using forest products as um, green building uh, material and the connection between those, and also protecting and expanding forests through research, conservation, and strong community programs. We'll also learn how to apply. Uh, the alternative compliance path, otherwise known as the ACP, within LEED uh, to get credits um, for your certified wood products of any certification. We're going to discuss SFI standards as a mechanism for sustainable forest management, verified supply chains, and responsible procurement of forest fiber, and how that all ties into the LEED ACP. And then we'll explore the need for science-based information to help consumers understand conservation-related values of responsible forest management through the lens of LEED and the ACP as well. So as uh, 
Brett, I think mentioned um, at SFI, uh, we envision a world that values and benefits from sustainably managed forests. And we do that by advancing uh, sustainability through forest focused collaborations. Our organization is made up and guided, it's actually guided um, by an independent board of director, directors that is made up of equal representation of C-suite executives within three chambers, equally representing economic, social, and environmental sectors. Uh, our organization is made up of four key pillars of work. Most folks know us for our standards, mostly for our standards, which is our forest management standard and our chain of custody standards. But we also do a lot of work in um, habitat conservation and biodiversity work, as well as environmental education and community engagement. So why do sustainable forests matter? Sustainably managed forests help our planet in numerous ways, as I'm sure you all know. And according to the most recent uh, report from the Intercontinental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, otherwise known as, um, improved forest management is really one of only a handful of response options that provide medium to large benefits when addressing climate change, uh, climate change challenges such as mitigation, adaptation, and, and other effects that we're trying to tackle within climate change. As you all probably know, forests provide numerous benefits. They clean the water, both quality and quantity, preserve quantity. They help to sequester carbon and the growth of trees. They clean our air. They provide you know, wonderful habitat for all certain species and biodiverse um, environments that are needed to help our environment and uh, our entire globe thrive. They provide human health and well-being for all of us, and they provide uh, local uh, communities with economic uh, opportunities as well. And of course, I left the renewable resources last because we're speaking about wood in different building projects and, and other, um, other ways within green building projects. So uh, you guys probably have heard about the uh, huge um, kind of growth within mass timber, uh, CLT in particular, across laminated timber here in North America. Here's a couple quotes from some key architects, Michael Green of Michael Green Architecture, um, now uh, part of Katera Group, speaks about the momentum of tall wood buildings being proposed and realized around the world is really creating an irreversible trend. And he goes on to say that it really means that for architects, sourcing more wood is going to be required. They need to make sure that you feel comfortable as designers and secure that that wood has been sourced through proper chain of custody and that you really understand and trust the certifier and the certification process so that we can be uh, rest assured that the wood is coming from sustainably managed forests. Michael Green spoke at a SFI annual conference in 2015. Another well-known architect, Susan Jones, uh, principal and founder of LTR Jones, uh, she speaks about uh, cross-laminated timber and she got very excited because it was another way to build beautifully with more use, greater use of wood, both in residential and commercial settings, and really begin to introduce low, lower carbon emitting building products, um, as well as sequestering carbon within those building products for the life and duration of those buildings. Um, so very excited to hear those architects speak about um, the benefits of building with wood. And she goes on, she also spoke at an SFI conference a few years ago, and she says that um, being SFI chain of custody certified is a meaningful and big step forward. So as I mentioned, most people know us for our standards, which are to advance sustainable forestry and responsible purchasing globally through certification standards and certified products. We work through innovation and strategic partnerships to take, uh, we're committed to taking a leadership role in, locally and globally, um, initiatives that are related and help to advance sustainable forest management. Our three certification standards that we have are the SFI forest management standard, the SFI fiber sourcing standard, and our chain of custody standard. Um, and we have labels that represent all of those for um, on, product, um, on product labels. We are the largest single forest certification standard in the world. 
um, and our standards are verified through independent third-party certification bodies such as SCS Global, KPMG, PricewaterhouseCooper, and many, many others. Here's a highlight of our current standard, which is dated 2015 to 2019, which of course it's 2020 right now. However, the standard is still applicable while we are in our two-year process of revising the standard. We've gone through um, tons of work with uh, stakeholder engagement and listening sessions and input and public comments, and we are revising our standards, which we tend to do approximately every five years or so. These are three highlights within the standard currently, species of concern, participants must develop a plan to address species of concern, conversion uh, from one forest type, uh, cover type to another is not allowed unless it's, uh, an assessment is conducted to determine ecological impacts are not significant and the forest type is not rare. And then minimal, uh, minimized chemical use. We SFI prohibits World Health Organization 1A and 1B pesticides, except where no other viable alternative is available, and bans pesticides listed under the Stockholm Convention on Persistent Organic Pollutants. This is in, a lot, this is in alignment with uh, many other key, um, key certification um, standards as well. Here is a growth chart of the trajectory, trajectory of growth from 1999 on the uh, left portion of the x-axis over to last year over on the right hand side and SFI you can see how we've grown we've got um, on the y-axis we have millions of acres zero at the bottom and 400 uh, million acres at the top so we are over 370 million acres certified to the SFI standard right now and we are growing um, as folks really understand the importance to ensure responsibly managed forests on all of our landscape forests, uh, forests here in North America. We provide uh, global supply at a low risk. SFI accounts for almost 25% of global certified forests and less than 2% of supply procured from SFI certified organizations come from outside of US and Canada. So that it makes it compliant with the Lacey Act and the EU timber regulation, which carries stiff penalties for procuring illegally harvested timber. So again, just uh, using the SFI certification and label um, gives users and everyone along the supply chain uh, uh, rest assured that it's being properly sourced. We have SFI on product labels to help identify this these certification, our certifications. And our products, um, products that are certified to the SFI standard are sold in more than 120 countries. And over 25% of Fortune 100 companies use the SFI on product label, uh, and it increases every year. And 45% of consumers are aware of the logo. The logo is on that coffee cup, but we can't see it because that would be against the rules. So. Um, and uh, there was also a nice logo for USGBC here, but we can't have that on here. However, as this um, course is mentioned, that SFI products do count for lead points within uh, USGBC's lead um, green rating system. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about that. Um, that is done through what's called the Alternative Compliance Path, otherwise known as the ACP. And there are currently 300 projects registered using the ACP and 60 that are certified using the alternative compliance path. So what is an ACP? An alternative compliance path allows lead projects to achieve an existing green building credit using an alternative approach to what is specified in the existing rating tool. So once all the kinks get worked out on this new pathway and then when it's adopted, the ACP will become part of the lead rating system in the, in the in the, in the bulk of the language of the tool. So what are some of the key points on the LEED ACP? It takes a stance against illegal wood and it reinforces the value of certified forest, responsible sourcing, chain of custody for forest products. It also gives architects and builders much greater access to renewable forest products. And it requires architects, builders, and consumers to verify the legality of forest products using lead in buildings, um, lead building, in, use in lead buildings, and awards credit for the use of wood and paper products certified to SFI, 
um, American Tree Farm Systems and CSA, which is a Canadian uh, certification system, and then PEFC standards as well. We have a couple documents on our website that can be found to help you understand how to count certified SFI certified products within LEED. So you can find these um, helpful uh, documents on our website. And then how exactly do you count uh, towards LEED points? You must first know that 100% of the forest products are from legal non-controversial sources and that 70% are coming from responsible sources and that the remainder must be certified sources evident by chain of custody um, certification. And so SFI fiber sourcing certification counts as legal and responsible and our forest products delivered through chain of custody counts for legal, responsible and certified sources. Here is a chart to show you the breakdown of what all is qualified. The program name is on the left, you've got SFI, and the two, two or three um, certifications below the chain of custody and the fiber sourcing. And then a couple of the, all the other certifications are listed below as well. And then as you move over to the columns on the right hand side, it'll indicate which of those certifications are applicable for um, legal, which is 100% need to be legal. And then which ones in the middle column account for responsible sources, which 70% need to be considered uh, responsible sources. And then on the far right column, the remainder needs to be chain of custody. So this indicates which one of the standards on the left do qualify for chain of custody. Uh, the uh, alternative compliance path applies to all LEED V4, LEED 4.1, and the 2009 systems, if anyone's still using that. And here's kind of a breakdown of where you'll find uh, where it is applicable um, to use the ACP within the different rating systems. And so the, um, I'm not sure if you're all familiar with the LEED V4.1. It's very similar to LEED V4. However, it's a little bit easier actually. Um, and if you have a project that is registered for LEED V4, you have the option to selectively choose what aspects of LEED V4.1 you'd like to use. And if you're, use, if you're building a project with certified wood, it's in your benefit to choose up to uh, 4.1 for the sourcing of raw material credit because it has um, a better threshold and you can also gain two points now instead of one. So um, version 4.1 allows for one point for 20% uh, and two points for 40% based on cost of permanently installed building materials that meet the responsible extraction criteria, all of which can be satisfied by SFI chain of custody certification. And projects can mix and match from the list of below to meet these thresholds. So the list below is the uh, criteria in which um, can be selected um, and applied for these points. Lead version four only allowed for one point here and the uh, threshold was 25%. So as mentioned before, um, you need to have 100% uh, of your wood coming from legal sources, 70% coming from responsible sources, um, and then the rest must come from chain of custody. And at least 20% based on cost of all permanently installed building materials um, meet uh, the responsible extraction criteria. Uh, so we're gonna look at an example. Um, this is just really, really basic, but if your total value of all permanently installed building products, wood, concrete, steel, uh, totals $10,000, then the builder architect must use at least 2,000, which is 20% of the value worth of materials uh, that meet one of the four responsible extraction criteria. And I believe you can mix and match with those criteria as well. So this gets a little techy. We'll kind of breeze through it. We can dive deeper offline if you want, but basically this is just to illustrate how you would count that. Again, very simple numbers. Your products are listed on the left and you um, have product type following that, flooring, casework, windows, et cetera. Your costs are in that yellow column. And then your sourcing, that's kind of where we're getting into that 100%, 70% and remainder. So SFI chain of custody, 
fiber sourcing, and then it carries out the dollar amounts, and, and then the columns, the three columns on the left, identify your meat in 100% or your meat in the 70 or you're meeting the chain of custody. So down on the bottom, tallies up your um, critical chain of custody dollar amount. And then that is placed, uh, there's a, there's a uh, worksheet here I can give you the link for that really helps uh, do this for you. Um, and then you can see here um, below the red circle that that does in fact meet the 20% threshold. So here is the link um, and Brett can send that out uh, if you guys all want for the ACP calculator that can help you um, do all that math for you so you don't have to. And then there's an example for LEED uh, 2009. Not sure if folks are still using um, this system. You can until I believe next year, June of next year. So the criteria thresholds are a little bit different, similar but different, 100% uh, uh, legal, 70% from responsible sources and 50 uh, wood-based materials are certified. And again, we have an example for this. I'm gonna breeze through that. So how do you document SFI wood and prepare uh, and paper, excuse me, for the ACP? Well, you look for the on-product label and we have a database online on our website that you can also get certifications and or the, you can get the certificate from the supplier um, of your wood product or paper product. So we'll dive a little bit more into the green building um, projects and why SFI and certified wood in general is really good for that. Architects and builders choose wood because it looks great. It stores carbon and it provides biophilic and human health and wellness benefits and offers numerous environmental attributes. Um, as we all spend more, more time indoors now than we really ever have, and we're already spending 90% of our time indoors, you quickly become really intimate with your surroundings. And by nature, kind of innately, humans are drawn towards uh, wood and nature, not natural products. So if we can help bring nature and, and, and the natural environment indoors through the use of wood, uh, we as humans feel more comfortable, more relaxed, um, and our productivity level, levels increase as well. In addition to the fact that our stress levels and the metabolic um, data decreases too. So heart rate, pulse, all those things decrease when we're surrounded by um, wood and natural environments. Uh, SFI certified products um, help to achieve points and uh, credits within 13 different green building rating systems. I no longer have them all listed here because we had their logos, but um, they're very applicable in many different green building um, certification programs. And SFI uh, wood and certified wood provides better building solutions in the built environment. Choosing certified sustainable products helps to reduce carbon emissions and is also a cornerstone for um, buildings, both small and now becoming more uh, taller mid-rise buildings with the use of cross laminated timber and other mass timber uh, options. So cross laminated timber, uh, helps with speed and efficiency. Most of it's all built off, well, it's all built off site and it's uh, shipped sequ sequentially to the job site and it's erected much faster and a safer um, safer rate. Uh, and it's also done um, uh, much more, less of an impact to the, uh, to the neighborhood as well. One of the first, or actually, excuse me, the first, uh, um, CLT manufacturer in North uh, in the U.S. is Smart Lamb, and the president there is Casey Malmquist. Uh, they were also the first to be SFI certified, and he speaks that our cross laminated timber reduces a project's cost and carbon footprint. And with SFI uh, chain of custody certification, we offer clients supply chain assurance that all products are sourced from well managed forests and that are third party certified to rigorous standards. We support uh, USGBC and have for many years, strong relationship with them, and we are have a strong presence at Greenbuild and have for, for many years. Our CEO, Kathy Abuso, has spoke for a number of years as we sponsor the Women in Green uh, uh, Breakfast, uh, which used to be a, well, now it's a lunch, actually. It's a lunch, uh, hundreds, I forget how many, 700 folks attend that. I spoke at it in 2018. So we have a strong 
strong connection with them. And on their website, not too long ago, last year, they posted, they meaning USGBC, posted an article that we wrote on uh, earning lead points with certified wood. So that's another good resource if you're interested to learn more about how you can count your certified wood and lead projects. SFI is also aligned quite nicely with all of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. There are 17, but most specifically these five here. Um, and that is important for many reasons as we all try to um, address the effects of climate change and become more sustainable within our development of communities, buildings, um, and our environment. So healthy forests are critical. Uh, another, in addition to our standards, I mentioned we have three other pillars. Conservation um, is one of those pillars, and that is to advance credible and effective solutions to environmental challenges through the SFI standards and leadership initiatives. So the SFI standard is the only forest standard that requires its participants to invest in forest research. So here's kind of a breakdown of dollars that were invested last year. Um, a big chunk of that goes to forest health and productivity, um, landscape uh, ecosystems and management and biodiversity, wildlife and fish, water quality and other areas. Since uh, 1995, SFI participants have directly invested nearly $1.8 billion in forest research. That's critical. So not only are we certifying that the, the wood is coming from sustainably managed forests, we're investing, we're requiring our participants to invest to further research so that we can be uh, become better stewards uh, and partners within those forests as well as communities as well. We've identified uh, key areas to focus in that research um, and those key areas uh, that have been identified uh, by our advisory board is water, biodiversity, and carbon. Brand owners need to understand the impact of their sourcing. Program participants need to justify the cost of the certification. Conservation stakeholders need to better understand the value of certification and uh, improved understanding will facilitate uh, continual improvement within SFI as well. We are working to quantify carbon values in forests that are certified to SFI. We have numerous partnerships going on right now and uh, seven conservation impact projects that are currently underway related to climate change. They range in scale and focus, both calculations of carbon values and assessing forest health and resilience. And we are exploring methodology for supply chain specific uh, projects as well. Here are two examples of some of those projects, uh, conservation and carbon projects that are being worked on right now. Uh, a practice-based approach to increasing forest carbon mitigation through forest soils um, with the American forests, um, as well as um, linking SFI certification and climate smart forestry. Um, and that's being done through the Michigan State University and it really helped to quantify the benefits that uh, result from the good forest management practices that take place as a result of implementing the SFI standard on those forests. Um, th this is a, a partner or a, this is the uh, IUCN that helps to advance uh, nature-based solutions. Um, it's the International Union of Conservation of Nature, and they um, are welcoming SFI as um, a member and they're happy to have a co uh, collaboration going with them as well. A third pillar of our work is community engagement, which advances collaborations between local communities and the SFI network to increase mutual understandings of the values and benefits provided by sustainably managed forests. We have what are called the SFI implementation committees. There's 34 of them. They're state, provincial, provincial and regional SFI committees that work kind of at the grassroot level. Um, and they include private landowners, independent loggers, forestry professionals, government agencies, academics, scientists and conservationists. So they work together to address um, uh, issues that affect all of us and they support training of resource and harvesting professionals, and they do outreach to family forest owners and environmental education. A lot of the 
a good bulk of the forests in North America, well, actually in the US, are owned by um, small, uh, by families. And they're small land plots, and they're not that large, and they may not have the resources to get certified. And so these, uh, these networks help to do outreach, to help educate and provide resources to those folks or, or, or anybody who may, may benefit from them. Here's an example of the increase of logger training that has taken place. Since 1995, there were 34% of the loggers trained. And now through these programs, that's increased, it's a little outdated, 2018, up to 96% of all fiber um, supplied to SFI is done so by um, trained harvest professionals. And that's really important so that they understand BMPs, that's management practices, and they can see with their own eyes and identify maybe issues that might be there for them to address. Uh, and um, so it's very critical to have those trained professionals um, a part of the whole, whole process. We support uh, underserved communities, youth, uh, urban, uh, urban youth, African-American landowners and indigenous housing. Again, a lot of the partnerships that we have um, were listed here, but the logos are removed, but Black Family Land Trust, Habitat for Humanity, Parks and People Foundation, and many, many others. So we really understand the importance uh, and value, and it's just critical to engage the folks that are um, connected to the uh, forests and the communities. Um, it's a critical component of sustainable development, quite frankly. We work with 40, over 40 indigenous groups across the US and Canada. Um, they've adopted the SFI forest management standard. And um, we work with, uh, there are over 10 million acres uh, of indigenous uh, uh, people's lands that are certified to SFI standards. And we really, again, work to help um, elevate uh, what has maybe traditionally been um, not recognized um, as being critical and important. And we're really working to elevate those relationships and the cultural and spiritual um, and material needs of the folks um, in and around these lands as well. More than 100,000 uh, acres of Boy Scouts of America land is certified to SFI. We have a strong partnership and collaboration with uh, the Scouts of America. There are also SFI community grants that help communities across the United States and Canada grow their relationship with forests and improve their quality of life. And these uh, grants bring together a diverse range of organizations to engage in uh, educating youth and training and educate current and future um, forest practitioners. They promote indigenous values and support underserved communities throughout the forest forestry. Uh, again, this just speaks to our relationship uh, and uh, collaborations with Habitat for Humanity. And this is really a cool feature, um, I feel, but SFI really helps to connect people to the outdoors as 96% of uh, certified acres um, are available for uh, public to access for outdoor recreation. So that's, that's key and very important. And then the last uh, pillar of our work is in environmental education, which is to advance environmental literacy and stewardship and career pathways using trees and forests as windows on the world. We do that through what's uh, called our organization is uh, Project Learning Tree. Um, it's an initiative of SFI and it's a 40 year program that has um, award winning program that came under the SFI helm about four years ago now. Um, I think three to four years ago, and they do they they really uh, help tomorrow's youth become better stewards of the environment, and they encourage learning in the outdoors. They connect uh, kids to nature, offer engaging activities for teachers, students, and their families to grow their understanding and importance of forests and managing our natural resources, and exposes uh, youth to forest. Uh, forestry professions, natural resources, management careers, and other green jobs. So it's very critical to keep that pipeline going, not just for the forestry um, sector, but also to help ensure stewards of the environment in the future, because um, we protect what we love and um, we love what we know about. And so we have to help um, educate youth and get them outdoors to learn about nature. 
And PLT, Project Learning Tree, teaches kids how to think, not what to think. And so by teaching kids how to think and not what to think, they learn about complex environmental issues. And PLT helps young people learn the problem solving skills they need to make informed decisions about the environment. And over half of our lessons and curriculum take students outdoors for that learning. And Project Learning Tree has reached over 130 million students through um, over 760,000 educators since its founding. We have a really cool new um, resource uh, for green jobs and exploring uh, forest careers, which, uh, whoops, we missed two logos here, but it's done in conjunction with the Forest Service. Um, and this is a really, um, really great tool to help students learn about forest careers and quite frankly, green jobs, which is a wide variety of, um, of job career options. Uh, learning is in our nature and our curriculum within uh, Project Learning Tree is award winning and has um, achieved top awards um, within the Teacher's Choice Award as well as um, uh, National Geographic and Scholastic Awards as well. There's just some more tools that work to prepare students for green jobs. This is the PLT network in Arkansas, Arkansas and they, um, they Actually, we had our, um, that's where we had our conference last year and we worked with, uh, we had the USGBC um, attend that, some folks that were talking about um, ARC, if you're familiar with the ARC platform as the benchmarking tool to help uh, identify real-time performance of building operations, energy, water usage, that kind of thing. So they, they talked about that at our PLT conference last year. And we have a Green Schools investigation uh, curriculum, which uh, helps to helps uh, students learn about building operations. So it's very similar to LEAD in that it speaks to site investigations, uh, environmental quality investigations with indoor air quality, energy, learning about the energy use within a building and how to improve it and waste recycling and water investigations too. So this is for students to use within their schools. Um, it's a great, a great tool to help prep them for later in life when they may be homeowners and um, hopefully we'll be addressing these things as well. So really it, uh, it helps students take action to green their schools and empower youth to improve their environment as well as their health. We have an SFI annual conference. Uh, this year, unfortunately, was canceled. Um, we will be celebrating 20, well, we are celebrating 25 years now, and the our annual conference is now scheduled for May of 2021. You're all invited, and it will be taking place in Vancouver in Canada this year. And I mentioned we are celebrating 25 years strong and improving every year um, better choices for our planet. And with that, I will see if there are any questions. And I thank you very much for listening. And I don't know, Brett, if I need to do anything here. Nope, nope. Thank you so much, Annie. We do okay. have a, a couple, couple questions coming in here. And as those questions are coming in, let me just get to a um, couple things here. Um, so for those of you, again, looking for your Con Ed, um, take that survey that pops up at the end. Um, the same survey will be sent to you an hour later. So if you miss it when it pops up, you'll get another chance to take it. Please just take it once. Even if you don't need those CEUs, please um, take it. We do want your feedback um, for this course. Um, and then real quick, for those of you in the future listening on demand, uh, take that 80% passing quiz uh, to get your Con Ed. Uh, you can go to the YouTube link and then um, from there head down into the comments section of our website. And then from there, you can see the direct access to our website to uh, take the quiz and pass that and get your CUs when you're watching on demand. And a huge thanks to our um, board of directors, our volunteers, all of our top tier sponsors, Mitsubishi Electric for going net zero, energy efficient with Air source heat pump technology, Ream doing the same thing uh, with your water heating um, and build Equinox for smarter ventilation to keep our buildings and homes um, healthier.
So I think one of the attendees wanted to go back to this question about a research investment, which was very interesting, and I made a note of it. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess they, I don't know if they were asking, I suspect they're not asking for a specific dollar figure, but maybe the question is more, you know, what are participants required to contribute to forest research, I suspect, as far as a percentage goes? Yeah, I believe it's a, I don't have that exact percentage, it's based off land mass. So uh, for the forest, um, forest management standards, so the landowners are required to invest based on the land um, acreage that they have. Um, and then, yeah, so it would be based on the land mass that they own is the percent of the contribution. Um, and um, another cool thing that I noted too, and this uh, attendee noted is um, this: these SFI certified forests being available for public recreation. Um, did they? Is that? Do you know? Are these public forests or private or a little bit of both? What's the breakdown there? Um, a little bit of both. So, for instance, um, some state forests are certified. Um, and then uh, there's large portion of um, large private uh, forests like Weyerhaeuser or you know that kind of thing. And so I don't have the specifics, but I just you know they're accessible to the public. So yeah, versus you know you know not being available. So okay. yeah, yeah. And there's a mix. There's a mix of private and public owned. Right. Um, I see you mentioned earlier uh, minimal chemical use. Uh, how often is that uh, a component of the other alternative certification programs, if, if you know? Is that rare? Is that, I mean, that's one thing I've never heard of before from these programs. Um, so I didn't know if you had any more information on that. You mean like how often are, do they use them? Or? No, what I mean is do the other alternative certification programs like FSC, obviously the big one. Yeah they also have these chemical use components in them i've never heard of anything like that so yes they do they do and they're very comparable um you know you can get down to the you know the thing too you have to keep in mind is that sfi has one forest management standard that's applicable in the u.s and canada on all lands we have one standard fsc for example has numerous different forest management standards that are applicable uh different standards in different regions and so we just have one and so with different ones you may have different mm. uh, things that are acceptable but yes they're both uh both and actually i'll just say all standards you know will require some use and then there's some requirements that have to be met like only if nothing else is available and that kind of thing and and they're all very very comparable um, how does it compare to full-on organic certification? Do you ever see forests getting uh, just organic certification? That's a good question. Um, I uh, am friends with uh, Katie Fernholtz of Dovetail Partners. And I remember years ago, years ago, um, she was talking about that. I have not heard anything about that since. Um, I don't think it's, I don't know it to be a thing. Hmm. Maybe I'm wrong, but um, I, I'm not aware of any organic forest certification. Mm -hmm. So you were you were mentioning, um, uh, especially FSC having these multiple types of certifications. I was looking at your list there, and it appeared them and you all had some sort of other subsidiary, or let maybe lesser. Like I think yours was named Certified Wood Fiber, and those seem to not meet certain components of LEED. Can you elaborate? I, I guess I assume both programs just had one type of certification, but maybe not. Yeah, no, they, they have different. So for instance, um, I there was a, a slide that I covered that I'll just, uh, if I can find it for my own reference. So for instance, um, well, we have fiber uh, forest, forest management certification, which would be the through the chain of custody. So we have the chain of custody certification and then we have the fiber sourcing certification. Um, for instance, FSE has something similar. They also have a chain of custody certification, and then they have what's called controlled wood. And so I can speak, they're very similar, but I, yeah, I can speak mostly towards our fiber sourcing. So uh, SFI certified uh, 
program participants, companies that are certified and that are purchasing fiber, they can either do one or the other or both. So chain of custody is like an accounting system. So for, you know, if you buy, um, you know, 100, I'll just say $100 worth of chain of custody uh, fiber that comes from certified land, you can sell $100 worth of uh, chain of custody. So it's a checks and balance uh, accounting system. Fiber sourcing says, okay, if you, as a, as a, fiber buyer, a mill or a procure, procuring fiber. Um, if I'm buying from maybe a small land owner that doesn't have any certification, I can still say that it might be fiber sourcing certified. There's criteria that I need to ensure that it is taking place. So there's still um, checks and balances that take place to ensure that that uh, fiber that's coming in is um, managed properly and is sustainably managed for us. Um, may not be certified because it might be 40 acres that a family only harvests once because they need money for college or something like that. But the uh, mill can still count that as fiber sourcing when it meets all these criteria. And again, this is all subject to the third party audits that happen every year. And so that's all um, very um, um, official. FSC has something similar called controlled wood. I can't speak to that too terribly much because you know I, I, I don't know exactly what that is. It's similar, but as far as lead goes, um, when we're talking about that 100%, 70%, and then chain of custody has to be the remainder. So um, chain of custody counts for everything. So that's like, for sure you can use 100% chain of custody and it'll get you everything. If you're using fiber sourcing, that counts for your 70% that needs to be ensured that it's responsibly sourced uh, compliant. Um, control wood of FSC does not count for that. So, uh, you know, I don't know why, but it doesn't. Um, and then, um, of course, like I said, the chain of custody counts for everything. So I don't know if that clears it up or not, but there's a chart that's helpful to see, and we have that on our website. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. You know, it's interesting. I go out into the field or see a lot of photos because we audit buildings, inspect buildings for green buildings. Yeah. And you see a lot of your SFI labels just stamped all over everything. If you, obviously, without knowing what I've looked at, would you just guess that most of them comply with your chain of custody? Or do you think most of them are the, um, and I'm sorry, the names are kind of swirling in my head That's right okay. now. Fiber sourcing. Fiber, Fiber sourcing. sourcing. Yeah. Um, I guess maybe I'd say probably most um, most would probably be fiber sourcing, yeah. um, but certainly a fair amount would be chain of custody. And you should be able to see that on the label. That would right. indicate, because it has to indicate, you know, which one it is. Yeah, yeah. Like, usually, like I said, we we um, we just see the SFI. And we're like, okay, there it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah. we haven't um, chased after the illegal wood credit yet, so or the, the ACP <laughs> yet. Um, so it wasn't one anything to look, it wasn't, specific. it was just, oh, great. It's certified, you know, thumbs yeah. up. So, yeah. um, so yeah, that, that's helpful. Um, so another question here is you had mentioned, um, you had brought up some alternative lead V4.1 points in regards to the USDA bio-based certification program. Obviously wood is bio-based. Does SFI automatically, um, meet that bio-based certification then too? Um, did I mention the bio-based? I don't remember mentioning the bio-based. It was very, um, it, was a, it was a, it was a bullet point on one of your many slides. I don't even, I don't oh, think oh. Oh, it, so. yeah, yeah. You mean one of the extraction criteria? Yeah, yeah. Um, let me try to find that. Um, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> I think, I think, no, we're applicable to the wood products. So I don't think we're, I think bio-based is more like thatch grass or, you know, um, right. maybe something else, but we would be applicable in the wood products. Right. So what I meant to say is if somebody uses an FS, SFI wood product in lead, would it also be bio-based? Uh, would it count for that too? You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't know for sure, but I don't think that, I don't think it, I'm not positive, but I don't think it counts under the bio base. It only counts through the ACP okay. for the wood product. Okay, fair enough. Um, what uh, what about for forest fire prevention? What role does SFI um, tie into that? 
Um, you know, forest fires have increased in intensity and frequency, unfortunately. Um, right. And I mean, basically, properly managed forests help to, you know, help to prevent the increase of, you know, fires due to. I mean, if you just have, um, I think, I think California, a lot of. I mean, I don't know, I'm gonna. This isn't my forte, so I, I can't really get too much into it. But I can just say that, um, you know, properly managed forests are going to be. Um, thinned on a regular basis, they're going to be properly managed so that you're not going to have a lot of um, fuel that um, left there on, you know, that is going to be more apt to fires. So properly managed forests are better for forest fires. <laughs> okay. To and, and, your, and your program has that management piece, obviously, right? That, that. I mean, yes, I mean, right, for the, when you properly manage forests, that's, yes, yeah, part of the, I mean, we could look at the standard to see the breakdown, but I mean, there's, right. I'm not quite sure I understand the question specific to forest fires. I mean, we would, the criteria within the standard help ensure that the forest is healthy and such that it's less susceptible to fires. Yeah, it, that's, well, yeah, that's exactly what I was, yeah. yep, great. Um, uh, Embodied carbon, you and embodied energy, and it sounds like you've got some pilot programs going on with that. So, I, are you at a point where you can say, you know, your forests have a certain embodied carbon over non-certified forests, or is that still more on the research side? Um, that's a good question. Actually, um, and I can follow up sending you this. The University of Michigan just uh, completed a study to say. Uh, it was about SFI certified forests and carbon. Um, we can't, the, the quantifi quant quantifying the amount is not finalized yet. Um, right. We have other, other partnerships that we're working with as well. And we, we're having ongoing discussions because we know that's so important for people to want to know. Um, but we don't have, you know, uh, we don't have the specific number right now. And, and part of that is, is that, you know, forests are vary from region to region and species to species. And so um, it's very difficult to say and uh, that, you know, to, to, to have a wide um, overarching statement that is applicable to all is probably not going to work. And I know it's what people want because it's the easiest to calculate and to, to, to kind of just have a bottom line. Um, one of the things, too, to keep in mind, and, and let me back up. I'll follow up and send you that um, that report from Michigan that hopefully you can send to or I can send to uh, the attendees that will be very helpful from the Michigan uh, University of Michigan. But the other thing to keep in mind too is, is carbon is um, key in the building industry and everybody wants to reduce it. One of the things to keep in mind is that um, forests have numerous benefits and sequestering carbon is one of them. Anytime you start focusing just on one thing, um, lose sight of the other things, you've got the trade-off thing going. So you want to make sure that you're managing for all the good benefits that forests provide, and not just one. Because inevitably, if you're only focusing on one thing, um, you know other things are going to um, be at peril. So it's really taking a holistic view of all the benefits, um, carbon being one of them, but mm -hmm. water, Great. biodiversity, and others need to also be calculated into that formulation of the bottom, you know, the bottom benefit, bottom line benefit. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm definitely really interested to follow up with the University of Michigan, obviously being in Michigan, see a lot of their work. Yeah, and, right. uh, That's right, work I forgot, yeah, <laughs> you're there. Great to, great to see that coming close to home here. So um, yeah. I think unless there's any other questions, there's one last one, um, and that is, you know, there's a huge movement um, in the urban forestry, urban scrub wood, whether it be, uh, I, you know, in some cases there's obviously existing wood in older buildings, but then more on just the wood that usually gets removed from these urban areas and then reused. Does SFI have any kind of support or any involvement in the sort of this urban sort of scrub wood movement that's going on? Excellent question. As a matter of fact, I mentioned that we're currently in the revision process for our standards, and um, that has come up. And 
actually at the onset or prior to the onset of our revision process. So we do have a task force right now who um, headed up by uh, Katie Fernholds of Dovetail, who is looking at the possibility of, um, of an urban certification. I don't know where they're going to come with it. I don't. I don't know if anything will will develop as far as a for sure standard. It may. It may not. But we certainly have a task force currently right now is in place having those discussions and seeing if it's um, viable and if it's something that um, we should look into. Or, you know, make a make a standard or uh, address. Great. Great. Well. Um... Annie, uh, thank you so much for your time. Um, thanks to uh, uh, SFI to having you out here and taking some time with us to answer all of our questions. Um, before we wrap up, where can people go to learn more, uh, get more information? If yep. they're building the project, they might want to spec SFI. What yeah. can they do? That'd be awesome. SFIprogram.org is our org is our website. Um, I don't have my email up here, but hopefully we can pass that out. It's a n n i e Annie dot Perkins at SFIprogram.org or uh, dot com. Uh, well, the email. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, um, I'll send that out to you. But um, it'd be at dot org. Um, I would love to help anybody with a project, and I would love to have um uh, you help specify it and if there's anything that i can do to help please reach out to me that's what i'm here for i can um, help walk through anything and then actually we'd love to showcase some sfi certified projects too we have an awesome communications team and we would um, love to see your sfi certified projects and help help elevate them and promote them and use them as uh, case studies great great um, well, before we wrap up, everyone, and thank you again, Annie, so much, and all of you for joining us. Uh, mm -hmm. We do a lot of webinars. You all see us here virtually, but we do want to see you all in person someday and be able to get back out there. So please, yeah. please do everything you can to wear your mask, to social distance, to yeah. stay in if you can. We're going to beat this thing. We're all going to see you in 2021 at your conference that's coming up. Good. So we got to stop it. And I hope you all uh, safety and health and take care. Yeah. Have a great weekend. Goodbye. Yeah. Thanks for your time. Bye-bye. Be sure to check out all of our courses available online that you can watch anytime and anywhere to pick up your CEUs. Before you go, make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube to get weekly updates and stay up to date on green building science courses, webinars, and home tours. Thanks again.